It is a big club with a great history playing in London. They probably came in at a time when we were pretty much at rock bottom, to be honest. It's hard leaving home, leaving your comfort. I think that's a massive challenge. A massive challenge. We changed 20 players this season. Almost a brand new squad, you know, and uh, in terms of the management team as well, pretty much changed. It'll obviously be a massive honour to kind of pull on the thistle, play for Scotland. And coming down here is part of that journey. Having the SIU pull out, it's kind of just a hit in the gut. Last season, the Scottish Rugby Union decided to invest in London Scottish, with players and coaches coming down from Scotland. A number of experienced players were released from the squad. At the end of May 2016, the SRU retracted their offer, leaving London Scottish in disarray. This is their story. I just think they're, bri they're brilliant, let's be fair. Uh, they were scandalously relegated, was it seven or eight divisions? Uh, when it was, you know, they, they had a, an owner who suddenly pulled out and th they should never have gone down that far. To have fought back to where they are is a quite wonderful achievement, one of the best in the history of club rugby in England. London Scottish Rugby Club, based in Richmond. The oldest of the exile clubs in England. They compete in the Green King IPA Championship. One league below the Premiership. They have produced more Scottish internationals than any other club. The start of the 2015-16 season saw young Scottish prospects Jack Cosgrove, Robbie Ferguson and George Horne arrive at the club on loan from Edinburgh and Glasgow. One day uh, our manager up in, uh, in Glasgow asked if myself and Robbie would like to come down and um, it kind of just went really fast and we ended up down here within three days or something. Myself and two other Scottish boys came down on loan um, and things sort of began to blossom from there really. I mean, yeah, Robbie and George came in and I think their first month here they both shared the Player of the Month awards. so I mean they really came in with a bang. I think we got probably the English side in the Championship so it's great for guys like myself and you know Robbie, George, boys that have come down from Scotland and uh, you know to, to play better than a uh, uh, higher level of rugby than we used to. The club is based on that Scottish heritage, uh, a lot of investors over a year and you know people on the board are Scottish um, so I think it's very important you want that, there's no point just having you know, London Scottish if there's no Scottish uh, players playing. You've got to look at it from a rugby playing point of view. I probably wasn't going to get much game time up at Glasgow, but obviously it's hard leaving home, leaving your comforts. It's out with your comfort zone, so it's uh, challenging, but it's exciting at the same time. These players have travelled south to get more game time, as Scotland has only two professional teams, Edinburgh and Glasgow Warriors. Uh, two professional teams is, is way too few, uh, almost suicidally too few. Um, I think, you know, in, in general, if you've only got two teams, you've got two jerseys for aspiring youngsters to, to aim for. Well, it's pretty tough, really, for the youngsters. Um, it's a bit like in Wales, where it's a big bottleneck, such a big pool of players, but it only comes up to two teams. Whatever else they do, they have to get more uh, professional teams feeding into the national structure. Some will cut it at 18, like Johnny Gray. Some will need to be 22, 23. They need more game time. Despite the new arrivals, the team were losing matches. And in January, the Scottish Rugby Union stepped in and gave the club Sean Nanine as director of rugby and Roddy Grant as defence coach from Edinburgh for the rest of the season. They probably came in at a time when we were pretty much at rock bottom, to be honest. Um, we were really struggling in the league. We kind of went into a bit of a rut in the middle of the season, um, so we needed a bit of help um, and you know, outside help, just something to uh, freshen it up. Um, and they come down and they did freshen up and knew a few ideas. Um, the boys bought into it and we got a good few wins. I think it was like five, six in a row. Um, pretty much made ourselves safe for the year. It was a few, well, I'd imagine there's a few team problems, just boys just getting used to obviously different coaching styles. Um, but the boys did really buy into it. They buy into it. We, we respected them as coaches and we saw the development. So certainly from, from Roddy's, like Roddy's perspective, he was so focused on defence. We had the best defence in the league at the end of the year. So you see a dramatic, a dramatic um, improvement in that. Yeah, it was, I was quite tough. I don't know whether I was welcome because I had to make a few changes. <laughs> I'm down there and the jobs changed this year. Last year coming down, it was to make sure we didn't get relegated and just stop the rot almost because it was quite tough. 
Um, and, you know, there's some good people there, but it was just wasn't working. And Sean's obviously overseeing, overseeing the whole project. He'll be the main man in getting, you know, people down here. It's like the Sean and Roddy coming down, giving their ideas from Glasgow, Edinburgh. Um, can only be a good thing. Uh, facilities will change. Um, it'll, it'll be a good good blend for the uh, next few years. It just brings a new new flavour. Um, Roddy, obviously, all his, all his experience playing with Edinburgh and Sean's coach uh, all over the world. And, with the Glasgow Warriors, so it's good having their experience to bring in. I think Sean uh, has stuck with it, came over as a really, really fine player from a great New Zealand rugby family, coached well in Scotland and now at the, at the Scottish, hopefully. I think he's A, was a great player and B, very, very influential. And I may be proved wrong, but I think he's the ideal man for, for, this, for this role. Scottish secured a number of wins and finished the season in a mid-table position. The SRU then announced a deal with the club, where Sean Aneen would continue as director of rugby. Up to 14 players would come down on loan from Scotland, and a brand new training base was being discussed. The SRU was getting a club to develop youngsters, and London Scottish was becoming more professional. The summer brought silence. Everything was not as it seemed. At the end of May, the SRU pulled the plug on the deal, leaving London Scottish with no director of rugby. Not even enough players to put out a team, and pre-season was postponed as club president Rob Lynch flew up to Murrayfield for crisis talks to save the club. The players, it seems, found out the same way as the general public. Yeah, well I got a text from someone telling me to look at the, the mail online because there was a little article in there or one of the news channels anyway, so yeah, that was a bit... I've never had that before, so that was quite interesting. Um, to be honest, the first time I saw it was in the press. Um, it was actually my housemate, Jamie Stevenson, who I literally woke up and had a WhatsApp message from him saying go on Twitter and have a look at what's going down. So that was a little bit strange to kind of find out that way. Probably isn't the ideal way to find out, but I don't think that there was a lot of time between things happening and it, and it, and it getting out. With the players that were remaining, we were talking amongst ourselves as a group and obviously speaking to our agents to see whether they had any more information about what was actually going on. The club uh, set up a meeting for the boys to come in to anybody who lived locally so they were able to go to that and then sort of put up a kind of sort of summary of what happened on the WhatsApp group so the rest of us could sort of be kept in the loop. We knew that there was something on the cards. We didn't know what was on the cards um, but we knew that there was discussions being had um, for the SOU coming back. I mean, the first day of pre-season when we showed up in the Porter cabin in Richmond and there was about maybe 13, 14 boys and you're kind of like, how are we going to train with this? The club admitted to facing serious problems but continued talks with the SRU and a new deal was struck. Sean Lennine would continue in his role and the club would be given up to eight players from the 2016 Scotland Under-20 squad as well as Under-20 head coach John Dalziel, seen here on the right work alongside Peter Richards as forwards coach. We were told it might be happening and then it was went a bit quiet and then we were told it was happening and it then stopped and then we knew for definite about um, what, halfway through June. Initially we got told to come down and then everything kind of fell apart um, and that was kind of a unstable time at the World Cup and then eventually they actually told us while we were away that it was back on. So it's kind of a mix of emotions. We had the the under 20 World, World Cup World Championships on um, so we're just concentrating on that and that's such a sort of intense tournament it was pretty easy to take your mind off what was happening next season. Um, there's obviously a lot of discussions uh, within the partnership between the Scottish Rugby Union and, and London Scottish which has gone on for some time and uh, there was a bit of communication but for myself it was only really confirmed just in the last uh, few days of the, of the World Cup. You know mainly to the off the field facilities and everything um, that was happening around the club rather than on the pitch on Saturdays. Uh, but once that, that was sorted, um, everything went through. We were in about our third week of pre-season, I think, when we heard that it was pretty much back on the table. So, yeah, like that gave everyone a big buzz. It was a difficult time, and I, I don't want to go into that, but, you know, it's great that it's back on. Um, you know, limit, limited to it, you know, at the moment, five players may have a couple, and young players. I'm sure everyone will see the benefit. London Scottish has a club, Scottish rugby, the Pro 12 with Glasgow and Edinburgh getting stronger players. Five of us came down at the same time and we've all got a little house together. Well, we had um, Robbie Ferguson kind of down here last season, so it's really good having him down uh, 
first uh, weekend we came down, he kind of showed us around, uh, settled us in, which was really good. They're sort of young kids coming up to the, just out of Scotland under 20s, and they've had a pretty good campaign with them. So, so yeah, no, they've brought a lot of sort of uh, youthful kind of exuberance, for want of a better word, to set up. Yeah, obviously, it'd be a massive honour to kind of pull on the thistle, play for Scotland. Um, that, coming down here is part of that journey. Five of them play with me in the under 20s, so it's been good to have people I know around me. Uh, and young guys at that, which has been nice. Uh, myself and, and John DL's down here full time now, JD, doing a great job. John Dowd's done great with the under-20s. Um, Scotland did really well last year. Yeah, he's, he's, he's good, John. John's, you know, he's straight talking, he's going to give it to you how it is. Um, he's working the forwards hard, as you'd expect, and they, they kind of need that. The squad was given a dramatic makeover in the off-season, and only nine players remained at the club from the previous campaign. Effectively, the new team, isn't it? They've lost so many players, influ in, uh, influential players like Mark Bright, Adam Kosnicki, um, that moved on. Josh Thomas Brown was really impressive in the second row. They've lost a lot of players. That's, there's no doubt. They've got to find a new, um, a new team spirit. They've got to gel together, together very quickly. I think they, they've torn out too much of the heart of the team. I think it will take a long, long time. Uh, for the culture to regrow. Yeah, I mean, a lot of players did leave the club because um, the SOU being quite selective with who they wanted to remain. It's a, a, almost a brand new squad, you know, and uh, in terms of the management team as well, it's pretty much changed. We changed 20 players this season, so very young players. We have eight key senior players uh, not playing, so the team's very young. I think that's a massive challenge, a massive challenge, and I think the SOU have gone too far. And I think just to keep nine, is completely wrong. You've lost the team spirit, you've lost the culture, you've lost the, the core of the team, and you're bringing in kids to do a man's job. That is very, very dangerous. I was in my final year at Cardiff and I got a call around February, March time uh, from an agent who'd been following my career. Um, thankfully, he managed to land me an interview in the Lensbury with the guys from London Scottish, and um, I managed to um, sign my first contract and now I'm here. Part of the new deal between London Scottish and the SRU was that the club would move their training base from the Richmond Athletic Ground to the Lensby Hotel in Teddington, a more professional environment. We were here in Richmond for a few weeks. You know, obviously the deal got put back on and we moved to the Lensbury. We were guaranteed to, to be at the Lensbury for this season and then having the SRU pull out was kind of just a hit in the gut. It is a nice touch having food laid on for us after training, you know, the amazing gym, the pitches, it's, it, is a, it, is, it is luxury. There's no comparison between obviously the Richmond Athletic ground and, and now, now training at the Lensbury. I mean these, these training facilities are, are, are a big step up um, in sort of quality um, of what we can get done. Uh, the gym's really good, we've got a new meeting room which really helps because you can get a lot more detailed analysis done. So compared to the Athletic ground, you know, We've stepped up from sort of more into a more professional environment. Well, I've heard uh, stories about the old ones, um, and I've been back since. Um, and they actually they've redone the gym, and it's looking nice. But being at the Lensbury is awesome. The Lensbury, uh, that was that deal was brokered by the SRU, so we're in a fantastic facility. <laughs> we're not, you know, all due respect to Richmond. We were well, I came last season to Porter Cabin. We're now at Lensbury, proper proper training facilities, proper gym. Most championship clubs, are, it's fairly rudimentary. I think it's high time that the championship was um, was funded better. I mean, the, some some of the the training facilities you wouldn't probably wouldn't board your dog there. It's an awesome setup uh, to have such a setup in central London. It's pretty impressive. If people want to give this impression of a really uh, high-tech, high-end culture, well, Lensbury's ideal. It's it's almost sort of too grandiose in a way. The facilities are fantastic, and if that makes uh, if it's affordable, if it makes the London Scottish players feel part of a of a major project, I, I think it's good. The team has been working hard at their new training base, and the players have set themselves high expectations. None more so than new signing Don McGeeky. I think ultimately you want to be at the top of the table. That's where everyone wants to be. Like people, people talk about, oh, you know, you've got to be realistic. But you know, we're we're not, we're not. I don't think we're we're, we're unrealistic at all in saying, you know, why can't we get promoted to the Premiership this season? Why can't we finish in the top four? Well, to be honest, like, like I want playoffs. Like that's why I'm at the club to try and make the playoffs and try to get into Premiership. I mean, I've been here when we made the playoffs a couple of years ago. I hope we do the same. Anything can happen, you know. 
surprise teams like Doncaster got to the final last year. You don't really know what's going to happen until you sort of get into the season. I would think that London Scottish would eventually get up there, but I think they'll struggle before they get better. I think it's going to be pretty tough for them to push for the playoff. Um, I think anything between six and eight, just mid-table, would be a pretty good achievement. The first home game of the season will see London Scottish face old rivals London Welsh. With so many new faces around the club, it is hard to know what this season will hold for the Scots. We're trying to be as professional as we can off the field and it's putting something in place. It's not going to happen overnight, so we need to put something in place and, and there's going to be a bit of hurt. You know, and we'll, the guys that step up will be the ones that will get you for it and will come through. I would say to the SAU, just remember it is not your toy, it is not just your development team, it is a big club with a great history playing in London.